Well, good evening. Good evening. Uh, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow to you all. Uh, I, always, I always love having church the night before because it gives you all the more time tomorrow morning. So I'm um, happy to be here tonight. Uh, most of our service uh, will be praying uh, divine service setting number three. So we'll follow the majority of our service beginning on page 184. Uh, but we will also be referencing uh, the bulletin as well as the psalm. Uh, we'll pray together Psalm 104 tonight. It's a great psalm of, of creation. Uh, actually, Luther uh, wrote his, his uh, meal prayer based, partly based on Psalm 104. Uh, the eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Uh, so we'll pray that psalm together. We begin, though, with our first hymn, 785, from 785. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
We sing together the Kyrie, it's on page 186. But our hymn of praise for tonight, we will turn to hymn 789. So we'll sing, Lord have mercy, turn to 789. Flowing out in the valleys and hills, 
a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So turn into your, the front part of the, the hymnal, the very front part, and find Psalm 104. And we will speak Psalm 104, whole verse by whole verse. So I'll begin with uh, verse 1. And follow verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers wings, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations, so that it should never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with the garment, the waters stood up on the mountains. At your rebuke they fled, at the sound of your thunder they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down, to the places set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You may spring such forth in the valleys, they flow to the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them the birds of heaven as well, they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause grass to grow with the livestock, and plants for man to cultivate, and that he may bring forth food from the earth, and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are watered by the the cedars of the in them the birds build their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows his time for setting. You made the darkness in his night, when all of these is the forest for your God. The young lion roars for their prey. Seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down on their beds. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In the wisdom that you made them all, the earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable living things both small and great. There go the ships and the body, which you form to play in the These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they are up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you redeem the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and trembles, who touches the mountains and makes snow. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let 
sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second lesson for this evening is from Second Timothy, or First Timothy, chapter two. St. Paul writes to Timothy, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing him 790 and 790. <laughs> Knock, and it will be opened to you. 
For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And as our confession of faith this evening, uh, we will speak together uh, the, third, or the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer and Luther's explanation of it. So we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread?
temple in, in, in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, dear friends of Christ, on October the 3rd, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed that the last Thursday in November will be a day of national thanksgiving. And I'm going to read a little excerpt of his proclamation because it's interesting. This is an American president saying these things, commanding and commanding the country to set aside a day to give thanks. And I, we're not just talking like, I'm, I'm thankful for this, and that we go around the table. No, he's telling us to be thankful to God. So this is what he says. He says, it has seemed to me fit and proper that all the blessings from God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea, and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father, who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessings, they do also with humble penitence for our national perseverance and disobedience, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged, and fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to deal the wounds of the nation, or to heal the wounds of the nation, and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. Well, it sounds like he's preaching a sermon. This is a declaration from an American president. So thus, Thanksgiving Day, as we know and celebrate it, was instituted. Notice, though, what Lincoln tied this day with. He said, I get this, he said, set this day aside so that the nation would soon be restored from the strife of civil war to full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. This proclamation is essentially the foundational reason why we gather in God's house during the middle of the last week of November. But it is important to note that we are not gathering to do anything differently today than what we do every Sunday or every time that we gather into God's house. We give our thanks and praise to God every time we gather here, every time we hear His Word and receive His gifts. Every service in God's house is a thanksgiving service. So today I want to focus our hearts and minds on one thing. It's something that we pray for weekly, if not daily, and if you track Martin Luther, he actually would have you say it about eight times a day. It is the Lord's Prayer. It is such a short little sentence, though, within the Lord's Prayer.
prayer that is that its meaning can so easily be lost. But on this day of special thanksgiving, it should be most near and dear to our hearts. We all know it, we all pray in the Lord's Prayer, we ask God, give us this day our daily bread. That's why we, as our uh, uh, confession of faith, why we spoke that, what Luther said that means. You see, because God has created me in all things, because God has made everything in all creation, He takes care of it. He supplies His great creation with all that it needs. He supplies us daily with all that we need. It may not be what we want. It may not come, come to us in the manner that we desire. And God's providence and care are even given to evil people. Dwell on that one for a while. But God does all of this because He is the loving Creator who has promised to provide daily for his creation by giving us our daily bread. Our daily bread is not food alone. We spoke moments ago that our daily bread is this. Everything that has to do to, in the support of uh, supporting needs of body and soul, such as food and drink and clothing. I'm not going to go through the whole list because you said it. And Luther even ends it with, and the like. He doesn't even finish it. All he says is, and the like. You fill in the blanks. Because you know what it is. All these are blessings from God that we are thankful for every day. As I mentioned a moment ago, as we gathered in God's house today, uh, because it is the eve of the day of national thanksgiving, but again, we are not doing much different then we will be doing this Sunday. We're giving thanks to God for all of His blessings to us and giving us our daily bread. But today, and in all worship services, we give thanks and praise to God for our spiritual blessings as well, which He, oh, he floods us overflowingly there too. The waters of baptism, the floodgates were open, and they poured out on us all, drowning the old Adam and rising the new creation. We give thanks this night for God. Um, we give Him thanks and praise for sending His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. And for His sake forgives us all of our sins. As I spoke to you moments ago, we give Him thanks and praise for giving us His true body and His true blood and the bread and the wine as we spiritually eat tonight as He strengthens our faith and forgives our sins. There, literally, is Jesus present with us in that meal. And we give Him thanks and praise this day for calling all of us his children, for gathering us in his house and giving us the gifts that only he can give only in this place. As the forgiven then and redeemed people of God, we should thank and praise God for Thanksgiving Day. Even though it is a national holiday, created to raise morale during the dark days of the Civil War, this day has become a blessing to God's people. It is a celebration of God giving us this day our daily bread. It gives us a reason to eat a little extra from God's bountiful goodness. And I have to make my obligatory pumpkin pie insert right here because Thanksgiving is pumpkin pie. It 
gives those people who are not always inclined to be grateful for what they have, it gives them a chance to stop and think of how blessed we truly are. It did give us another reason to come to God's house tonight, to hear his word and to receive his gifts. But just like Lincoln said, it has seemed to me fit and proper that all the blessings from God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and voice by the whole American people. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even into life everlasting. Amen. In response to the preaching of God's word, we sing uh, the words of Psalm 51, Created Me a Clean Heart of God. That begins on the bottom of page 192. The bottom of page 192. Please stand as we sing. And for generosity, 
that we may share the bounty of God's mercy with all those in need. Lord, uh, Lord, let, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the homes in which God's people dwell, that they may be places of blessing and love. For husbands and wives in their vows of faithfulness to one another, for, and for the children that God has given to, to their care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who care for the sick, and for the sick and those in need of healing, especially Annette, Eileen, Ethelie, Tom, Laura, Bill, Greg, Fred, and all those whom we now name silently upon our hearts. That God would heal them according to his good and gracious will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a willing heart to confess the mystery of Christ's presence in, his, in this holy supper. For faith to receive his gifts and commune worthily. And for the work of the Spirit, that we may manifest the unity of the Spirit in the bond of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, These and all that we pray, we pray to God as our Father, or that he hears us as his dear children and gives us only good things according to his will, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The service continues on page 194, page 194. The Lord be with you.
In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Leading the true body of the Lord Jesus and the drinking of his blood, strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul in the one true faith, even unto life everlasting. Depart now in his peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Thank you. 